Hi everybody, this is the first video in a series I'll be doing on the Damn Vulnerable Web Application or DVWA. So I'm at dvwa.co.uk here and you can see that this is a vulnerable web app which is based in PHP and MySQL. It will um, allow us to test out different web-based vulnerabilities. So you can see their command injection, file inclusion, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, things like that. Uh, essentially the format that I'm going to be doing this in is in each video I'll be going through a different category and there is a easy, medium and difficult or impossible they call it um, challenge so I'll go through each category one video I'll do on brute force and I'll cover the easy, the medium and the difficult and I'll, I'll do that to get through the whole series so um, what we want to do now is just get the we can download the source code here or go to the actual uh, github um, I'm also going to follow a guide here, which I'll leave the links in the description. This is a guide just for setting up DVWA on Kali Linux. You could just follow through. I mean, you'd probably be better off following through this, following through this guide here. Um, also, if you're installing on Windows, it has the instructions there. And if you want to just use the Docker as well, it has the commands to do that and any troubleshooting and things like that. So. One thing to note is that this is a vulnerable web app. Don't leave it running on your on your main system. You know, use a virtual machine to do this. Um, I'll not be covering uh, virtual machines in this, but I'm running Parrot OS. If you're using Kali Linux or Ubuntu, anything should be fine as long as you can go ahead and get this set up. So let's go through this guide now on downloading and installing DVWA. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do here is download the GitHub repo and put it into our for www.html directory. So, um, we go to the GitHub repo here, you'll see it's linking to Ethical Hacker, but it actually brings up DigiNinja, which is fine. That's what the official website linked us to. Um, so that's all good. Let's grab the URL for the repo and let's go cd var www.html git clone. Uh, you might need to do sudo depending on your permissions. And while that's downloading, the next thing they tell us to do is move it to lowercase if you want to move it to lowercase and then um, chmod recursive 777. Let's, um, let's move it. dvwa. Let's do chmod 777. It's then telling us to go into the config. I can just see this in the background. Let's see what we have in the config. We have one file here. Let's scroll down a little bit here. Um, telling us to take a copy of the config, make a copy of it as a backup. Um, I'm not going to bother doing that. I don't really care if, we, if, if I lose the file. But you can follow that if you need to, if you want to. Um, and it's telling us to modify. So let's have a look at the config file. It's, uh, the user and the password that's in here. So you can set this to whatever you like. I'm going to put this just crystal and crystal. Super secure, you know. Um, and let's see what else it's asking us to do. The next step is configuring a database. So let's uh, start the MySQL service. Oh, um, I'll do that as sudo. And MySQL as root. I also need to do this as sudo. It's a little dependent as the permissions for you. Put in your root password. And then we get access there. And let's see what it's asking us to do. Okay. Um, create user. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab a copy of that. Hopefully I can go back. Yeah, okay. And just update these to crystal and crystal. Hope you guys can see okay with um, this in the background. I'm not too sure how this comes out in the video. Um, just go up to 1080p and full screen if you're having any problems seeing the text. Okay, uh, so we need to remember that user and the password. That query's done. It's now asking us to grant all privileges. I'm just going to copy that as well. Paste it in there and put in our user and password again. There 
There we go. And we now need to configure our Apache 2 server. So I'm not too sure if I have the same version of PHP. Let's check CD ETC PHP 7.4 I have. So just see whatever you have. We CD in there and then we need to configure PHP any. And let's see what it's asking us to configure. We need to allow URL F open and allow URL includes, set them both to on. Okay, so copy that and search for it. That's already on for me. Allow URL include, that's, oh, okay, we need to set this to on, save that. And then start the Apache server. And now we want to try and browse to DVWA. Oh, we actually we actually need to copy that. Oh, okay. Oh, my bad. Okay. Um So we need to copy config to config.inc.php and let's try that again. There we go, now we get to the setup page. Okay, click create a reset database. Okay, there we go, we now have a login page. Now have the login, default login is admin and password. There we go, I'm going to save that. Okay, and cool. That's the setup. I'm going to close that down, I'm going to close that, close that, and now we've just got a DVWA. So I'm also going to add this to the bookmarks, or add this to the bookmarks toolbar, DVWA, so we can get back here easily. Um, yep, we have our um, list of challenges down the side. Let's have a look at the setup reset DB. Okay, about security. Okay, so this is where you can set the low, medium, high, and impossible. Oh, okay, so there's actually four difficulties. Okay, I'm gonna try and oh, it should be secure against all vulnerabilities. Okay, so whenever we go through each. Um, category we'll go through low medium high and then we'll see how we're unable to exploit it then um, with the impossible um, so we'll leave that the difficulty on, on impossible that's cool and um, the other thing worth just mentioning here is uh, some tools that you'll want to have installed um, close these things down something else that might be worth doing is um, you could if you use bash aliases you could um, set your you could like add cat sudo service mysql start um and sudo service apache2 start to just depending if, if you have this if you have this set up to bash aliases. Um, echo, sorry, cat, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> echo. <laughs> um, and then if we start a new shell, okay, I've messed up my aliases there, one second. I'll just pause the video a second because I have some passwords in there probably that I don't want to show. Okay, um, I've just left all, all my uh, private ones up at the top there and scrolled down. Um, I've added this here, the DVWA start, so um, I don't know what I was thinking there. I completely missed the alias keyword and the name of the command that we need and obviously the quotes as well. So um, 
Yeah, uh, but yeah, if you use bash aliases, you just have to have it. You can either put them in your bash RC file, or you can have it so your bash RC file checks the bash aliases. And now, if I save that and do bash again, clear this, and now if I type dv, dvw, you can see there we've got it on tab auto complete. And if we hit start, it'll go ahead and it'll start both of those for us. Um, I didn't, I missed the sudo there, so need sudo on both. So there we go, and that just means that. Whenever I boot up the system, I can just do dvwa start. You could do one for stop as well if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to do that. Um, another thing is burp suite. So I have foxy proxy set up here. You could set up foxy proxy and have it so that um, you basically go and create a profile and you can put in like your burp settings. Oh, I don't even have that. That's interesting. That's interesting because that was working for me without a, a dot in there at all. Um, anyway, and then port H80 is, is is for that, and then we go into our uh, preferences, privacy and security, and into the certificates. And you basically need to install the port swigger certificate here. Where's mine? SP. Oh, PS, sorry. <laughs> um, there's the port swigger. So basically, you'll need to install that. Once you've installed that, it means you can just go and you can turn burp off, or you can just enable burp, and then um, every and then our traffic will be filtered through burp. So if we turn this on and check that again, we we um, intercept the request. So this is going to be a pretty we're going to be using this tool on most of these, or, or a lot of these challenges anyway, so just make sure you have that set up as well. Um, turn intercept off here, so you can just allow everything just to run in the background, and then um, we'll try and explore some more of these uh, tools throughout the throughout the series. But that's us set up anyway, so we'll um, move on to the first video, which will be the brute force challenge.